kind of started off on a trip uh, where me and, and Tristan and Jordan went to see the Deftones. That was a while ago, over a year ago. And we talked about wanting to start a band because um, things with Seeker and Whisper were kind of on a break. Um, you know, everybody is kind of doing their own things in their lives, and that's totally cool. Um, so we always wanted to start a band because we've been friends for a long time. And um, we kind of had an idea of the music that we wanted to play, the style. And um, there was all these types of elements of Seeker and Whisper that we wanted to add in, but it didn't really fit because, um, you know, it just didn't really suit what we were going for with that band. So obviously for me, a guitar player. Uh, so we asked our friend Dave, Dave Ecker, who is also in Seeker and Whisper, he's a great guitar player, so uh, we thought we'd get him in it, and he was really stoked on that, so uh, we went ahead with it. And then we actually jammed, and we played the Lion and Pariah for about four hours straight, and crushed a lot of beer, and it was awesome. Uh, band started just like this, pretty much, drinking beers with the bros. Um, being like just freshly out of uh, other bands that have done relatively well. We wanted to start something that was like just for fun and um, we, me and Tristan and Ryan would get so blasted drunk together that we always would just be like, hey, we should start a band. Well, it was more like, like this close to the face, like, we should start a band. It was originally going to be a punk rock band because we're all like really huge punk rock bands, but uh, we decided to do something a little heavier, maybe more like you know, Thrice, kind of Norma Jean vein. And um, I think I wrote just like one demo and sent around the guys, and everyone was like, Yeah, buddy! The band formed kind of from the demise of Secret and Whisper, and a few of us still wanting to play music. Uh, some of us were different ages, some people got married, some people had kids, jobs came out in the way, you know, priorities change when you get older, and uh, we just couldn't do it anymore. So, went on the hiatus. The three of us decided we kind of still wanted to do something, always got talked about. Um, I played in bands with Tristan for years and years and years, and we were all great friends, and it just, in some combination or another, we had always talked about starting something, and one day we actually just did it. We had a jam space in my place, all the gear, and just went to town, actually buckled down and did it. Basically, Dave, Jordan, Ryan, and I have been really good friends for years. We've worked together, uh, played in different bands around the music scene, and we always joked about that if any of our bands ever broke up or fell apart, that we would definitely start a band together. And uh, basically, through our, our love of heavy music and progressive music, we just always joked about how uh, we would start a really heavy band with, you know, some melodic influences, Norma Jean, Deftones, He Is Legend, uh, some of the bigger names that we were into. So uh, it all sort of came together when uh, one weekend we took a road trip out to Calgary to watch uh, Deftones and Slipknot and uh, unreal road trip. And the whole time, my band, Dave and I played in a band called Oceans Apart at the time, and then Dave had moved on to Secret and Whisper. And Secret and Whisper was kind of moving into this phase where some of their members were, you know, getting married and having kids, and the future of the band was uncertain. So we went on this amazing road trip uh, to watch the Deftones and Slipknot in, uh, in Calgary. And it sort of just solidified everything. Uh, we realized that, you know, while all of our bands were sort of on the way out, that we could start this new project, and we were so sort of aligned with, you know, the type of music we wanted to play and what our influences were and what tuning we wanted to be in. And it was the first time we started a band that was like, okay, we're gonna be friends first. And no matter anything, talent level, it, it didn't matter. These, this was just gonna be the core, it was gonna be fun. We're gonna drink beers, we're gonna let it all hang out, be loose, have a good time. And we just wanted to play heavy melodic music in the vein of some of our favorite bands. So. I have really strange influences when it comes to music. Uh, some of my favorite bands, you know, Dave Matthews' band is a huge one, obviously because of drummer Carter Beaufort. Um, he is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I like everything. Uh, when I was growing up, I listened to everything from Slipknot to Blink-182 to lots of Dave Matthews to drum and bass music to, you know, like whatever. Um, I mean, obviously Deftones was a huge influence for me. Uh, especially from a drumming perspective, just um, Abe's approach to playing parts and, and writing really memorable things. Thrice was another band like that too, 
Um, Riley Breckenridge was an awesome drummer that way. He always created things that you really remembered. So um, it wasn't always the craziest, most technical stuff, but um, it was stuff that, you know, even if you didn't play drums, you could always air drum those fills, and that's such an you know, amazing trait with drummers when you can kind of accomplish that, just like Phil Collins. He does that. Um, uh, I'm pretty punk rock influenced. Like, uh, I think the first uh, time I ever heard like real music, I was listening to like, Silver Chair, Frog Snob was like one of my biggest records at the time. My parents always pushed like really, really Christian bands like Petra, and it was just awful. And um, like DC Talk and stuff like that. And I was walking through a field, and I picked up this tape and it said "Survival of the Fattest" on it. Someone had like thrown it out or something. And um, I took it home, and the first song was "California Dream" by High Standard. And when they kick in, it was like the speed of it. I was just like, "It's fucking crazy! Like, what is this?" And went to Justify Black Eye next by Noise for Name, and I was just like, "Man!" So I'm. I was really, really into punk, and the only punk I could listen to at the time, because my parents would always look through my record collections, was MXPX. So, MXPX is a huge, huge inspiration to me. And then, uh, a little bit later on, I started getting into, like, sort of, like, the more Christian, like, hardcore acts, like, uh, Strongarm, and Zayo, stuff like that. And then, uh, one of my friends brought over uh, Deftones around the fur one time for me, and, and that was just, that was the pinnacle. I was just like, so you can scream and sing at the same time? So... Uh, I'm kind of the odd man out of the band. I kind of draw from a little different music scene than Tristan and Jordan Ryan. I'm a few years younger, and quite a bit younger than George, so I missed a lot of stuff that they did growing up. I never got into the kind of Deftones, Pearl Jam, the grungy stuff. Um, I started because of the pop punk revolution and it just kind of followed me through. I really got into death metal and tech stuff and all that jazz and just, just kind of my, my, I've broadened it up a lot now but that was kind of what got me started. Nowadays like my main influence is um, I look up to Jim Atkins from Jimmy World for songwriting. Uh, I think he's probably one of the greatest songwriters going. Um, Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters, Nirvana, I think he's the actual last standing true rock star. There's a lot of good people out there. We talk about Tosin and Animals Leaders, uh, Misha Mansur is another big guy right now. As far as influences on the record and towards our music, I think, I mean some of our biggest influences, we always talked about Deftones, Norma Jean, He Is Legend, uh, some of the bigger heavy names in, in music. Um, a lot of my influences personally are uh, more punk rock oriented. Um, it doesn't come through a ton in the music, but just as far as the rawness of the music and um, you know letting things slide, everything from string noise to a little bit of feedback in the songs. Uh, a lot of my influences come from Strung Out, Good Riddance, a lot of the old Fat Records and Epitaph bands. Uh, Glass Jaw is one of my favorite bands. Poison the Well. The mix of melody and, and heaviness in those bands, for me, uh, is definitely one of my biggest influences. When I play bass, I mean, obviously I can't draw directly from guys like Matt Freeman, um, you know, from Rancid, or, you know, Mike Dirt from Green Day. I mean, some of the pioneers of good, sort of like, dirty bass tone, a lot of tasty licks. Um, but yeah, I would say for the most part, my influences probably be Poison the Well. Uh, glass jaw as far as bass, just a little bit of distortion, really heavy on the low end, and really just let the let the songs, you know, speak for themselves. Not to get too busy uh, with the bass playing, but just really hold down the low end and make sure it's groovy and fun.